took something and hid it in his tent, 36 men died on the battlefield. I guess what I want to say is that the promises of God are not automatic. Even implied in this promise and the other promises that God gave to Joshua, there are conditions, even when they're not spelled out. The Lord is saying, I've given you the land, but you must possess it, you must fight for it, and I want you to know that applying the promise is always a struggle, and sometimes we fail in applying a promise, even though it is rightfully ours. What is the first step? If we want God to fight for us, we must lay hold of a promise that relates to us and hang on to it no matter what. Let's look at a second step. And that is we must pray not only with a promise, but we must pray with authority. Another word for authority here might be faith. Listen to what Joshua prayed. I already read it, but I'm going to reread it because I love the words. O sun, stand still over Gibeon. O moon, over the valley of Agilon. Wow. You can't uh, say that Joshua was asking for something trivial. It wasn't a case, you know, where he was saying, just give me something small. I mean, he was asking for something big. What he was saying is, I want all of the forces of nature to fight on my side in this because I want to be able to win and it's important that I have more time to win. Now, there's controversy as to what really happened in this chapter. For example, there are some fine evangelical theologians who believe that when it says the sun stood still, it means that the sun stopped shining. And the argument is that Joshua, who came from Gilgal that night, in fact, I'm picking it up at verse 9, after an all-night march from Gilgal, Joshua took them by surprise, and the Lord threw them into confusion before Israel, who defeated them in a great victory at Gibeon. Israel pursued them along the road going up from Beth Horon and cut them down all the way to Azekah and Makeda. As they fled before Israel on the road down from Beth Horon to Azekah, the Lord hurled large hailstones down on them from the sky, and more of them died from the hailstones than were killed by the swords of the Israelites. On that day, the Lord gave the Amorites over to Israel and God fought for them. So there are many people who say that what it means is that Joshua needed some cover because the sun was too bright. His men who had marched all night were weary and tired. And so God used a hailstorm and gave Joshua the shade and gave the enemy the hailstones. And that's really what happened is that the sun just stopped shining so that the people were able to be refreshed. Well, I can see that possibility. In fact, those of us who were to Israel many years ago, and Daryl, I think you were along at that time, we actually stood on the hill where Joshua stood. And we looked at Gibeon, and we saw the Valley of Agilon, and that was the view that our uh, tour guide took as to what happened. But you know, you look at the text here and you say, well, I don't think that that's all that happened. It almost seems as if there was an extension of light because it says the sun stopped in the middle of the sky and delayed going down about a full day. There has never been a day like it before or a day when the Lord listened to a man. Surely the Lord was fighting for Israel. There's something else going on here in the text. It almost seemed as if that the day was prolonged and there was more hours of sunlight. Now, that, of course, creates uh, great uh, problems for scientists because, first of all, uh, Joshua said, Sun, stand thou still. Well, if you know anything about astronomy, we are told that the sun is always standing still. It is the world that is turning at about a thousand miles an hour at the equator. But, of course, the Bible is written in the language of appearances, just like your almanac is written in the letter of appearances. Or if you are listening on the news and you're listening to the weather, they do not say, now tomorrow morning the earth is going to rotate in such a way that we uh, hope to be able to see the sun at 745. Now they talk about a sunrise and a sunset, and that's what the Bible is talking about too. So that's really not a problem. The other problem, which is more difficult scientifically is if this world were to actually slow after going a thousand miles an hour 
You could imagine what would happen, tremendous catastrophes as lakes and rivers and oceans would be thrown helter-skelter because of the slowing down of the earth. Well, this is Pastor Lutz, and of course that would happen unless God chose to prevent it. I hope that you stay tuned next time because we're talking about one of the most remarkable of all the miracles in the Bible, the day that the sun stood still. But we don't want to miss its central message, and that is the fact that God answered prayer and God fought for Joshua on that day. And so let me encourage you by saying that the God who helped Joshua is the God who can help us. Trust him, believe him, pray, and he'll be there for you too. Dr. Erwin Lutzer with part one of Let's Experience the Power of Prayer, the last message in his series, Getting Started Right, Lessons from the Life of Joshua. Tomorrow, lessons we can take home from the Valley of Agilon. Running to Win comes to you from the Moody Church in Chicago. Getting Started Right can be yours as a six-message CD series. The series is our thank you when you give a gift of any amount to support Running to Win. Just call us at 1-800-215-5001. That's 1-800-215-5001. Online, go to OfferRTW.com. That's OfferRTW, all one word, dot com. Or write to Running to Win at Box 11174, Chicago, Illinois, 60611. This is Dave McAllister. Could the sun really stand still? Join us tomorrow for our next Running to Win.